Hey, this is Ray from the Podcaster Studio doing a quick, just a quick video to show you my Canon 60D setup from a shoot that I did over the weekend. Dave, Dave, you asked for a, a quick overview of the setup and that's kind of what I'm doing. It's just a bonus video for the Podcaster Studio on Facebook, so facebook.com slash podcast helper if you're watching this somewhere else. I just threw up a couple lights. I got a key light. I just looked right into it. It's a bad idea. Key light, fill light, and just, uh, you know, basic orange wall in my studio here. And of course, the setup that I used for the weekend shoot for a client who needed a video that was just a website introduction, basically looking right into the camera, just like I'm doing right now. And so uh, the DSLR is a good way to use that. I explained that little clap I did in the beginning there. That was to line up the audio that's currently going into the H4n with the camera that's recording, which is currently a Canon T2i. So, or 550D. So I'm going to have to take the audio going into the H4n uh, off the lav mic, which I'll show you in a second, and line it up with the video coming out of the Canon T2i. And so that's one of the reasons why these cameras aren't necessarily ideal for podcasting because they, uh, they have limitations and 12-minute uh, record time. You can ask me about that in the comments if you don't know about it. And as well, uh, audio. Audio can be difficult. So this is going to show you how I get quality audio into the DSLR recording. So I just started off here basically with the uh, tripod that this is on. It's just a Manfrotto um, quality pair of sticks, they call them, and uh, which is just the sticks that it rests on. And a nice fluid head for video, which is a 701 HDV here, which is a basic video uh, tripod head. And it allows you to tilt nice and smoothly as well as pan and you can pan and tilt and get nice shots that way and that's why you want a fluid head tripod for your setups for your video setups um you notice i've got some rubber bands on here these aren't just arbitrary if you want to get a nice slow pan you can use the rubber band trick by pulling a rubber band it stays nice and smooth um, you can see i got it pretty set pretty tight here but i can get a nice smooth pan with the rubber band and so just a little DIY hack trick that I like to do uh, to get smooth pans sometimes, depending on the situation. Next, actually attached to the tripod is a special Manfrotto base plate here, which is a quick release. And uh, I've got this all rigged up, but I'll try to pull this off here. You can see it just comes off just like that. And I think I actually just uh, turned the camera on or something, that was the click. But uh, we're not using this camera for filming, so that's okay. Uh, you can see here it's just a base plate that attaches to the bottom of, in this case, the 60D. And the other part lives here on the Manfrotto tripod and it has a nice little uh, leveling bubble. Probably out of focus now. Leveling bubble up there for you. Uh, but the main thing is that it's quick release so I can just take my camera and just simply just put it on my tripod and snap it right in. A little smoother, usually. <laughs> but uh, that makes it really easy to be working on a tripod and then quickly, uh, you know, run and gun. I see something over there, I need to get a shot. Bam, I'm off and I'm running. Of course, the strap is sort of in the way here, but I'm using it to hold the uh, other end of the lav. But bam, I got my setup, my rig, and I can run and shoot and get my shots. And then we can come back to a tripod setup and um, simply clip right back in. So that's really handy. Not a It's not a required piece, but uh, makes it Another piece that makes shooting a lot easier. So we go from the base plate to the, um, the Sennheiser uh, system, the microphones that I'm using. I'm actually wearing one now. So I've got the uh, Sennheiser G2 uh, EW100s here, probably out of focus, which is just the lab mic, and that's the sound of the, uh, of the mirror going back down and turning that camera off. And uh, this is just the lab mic. That is hooked right here onto my shirt, and you can tell the audio is probably much different when I get much closer to the microphone, which is an important element of recording audio into a camera. The further away you are from a microphone, the worse it gets. So if I use the microphone on that camera, it would be really bad and you'd barely, barely be able to hear it. So I've got a lav attached here. And so that works really well. And so this lav uh, mic is the other end is the receiver here and that's why I have it on the strap so I can just monitor it and keep it within range. Um, goes in via XLR into the H4n and that just plugs in right here. The H4n has two XLR uh, balance connections. And so 
I plug the lav mic right into the H4N and I actually record to the H4N as well as the 60D. So that gives me some redundancy in case the audio going into the 60D is not quite what I want or something just happens, something goes wrong. So that's how the audio gets into the, uh, from the lav to the H4N into the 60D. And uh, after that, really you have the camera. So Canon 60D, it's got a Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter lens, which gives you a wide angle and a little bit of a zoom uh, with an aperture 2.8, which gives you that nice shallow depth of field that people are looking for with these cameras. And um, it's got the nice swivel out screen here, which is uh, great for video. And uh, if you can still see that, you know, you can see it at all angles. That's really helpful. And you can flip it around and it goes right back in. And, and um, so after that, I've got this splitter here because you can't monitor audio in these cameras is one of the problems with these cameras. I'm monitoring the audio that goes into the Zoom H4n. And so there's this, this cheap uh, $5 Radio Shack audio splitter, which takes the audio that is going from the lav mic into the H4n and then brings it out of the H4n into the 60D right there. So because you can't monitor, once again, you have to monitor what's going into the H4n only. So you're not actually monitoring what's going into the 60D, but it matches pretty close. So if you set your levels here and you set your levels in the manual controls in the 60D, you get great audio essentially. But again, you have that backup system in case something is wrong for the audio that you can't monitor. So uh, monitor through one end and uh, pipe it out all through the same jack with the audio splitter. So um, you can also put in, like I said, another uh, XLR mic here. So another host, but you also have, uh, or guest, you also have the uh, condenser mics on the front, which is really nice. And uh, that makes for some pretty clean audio. But again, if you're not close enough, you're going to catch too much room noise. So that's the setup for the Canon 60D and how I get quality audio into it and uh, stabilize it with a nice tripod and use some professional mics and the uh, video comes out looking great and just as important, sounding just as good. Take a look at thepodcasterstudio.com for more podcasting related content. Even though this isn't podcasting specific, you can use this setup for podcasting, although I recommend a traditional camera and then use these type of cameras for pickup shots, B-roll, or for interviews. But again, you're gonna might have trouble with that 12 minute limit. So some things to fight with, but the image quality you can get out of them may make it worth it for you. So leave your questions in the comments or your comments in the form of a question <laughs> below or wherever you're watching this video. And uh, we'll see you next time.